Welcome back. Now, do we have Steve on Skype? Hello? Yes. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you. How are you doing today? Thank you for joining us this evening. So how, how have you been coping? How is the lockdown affecting you and work and all of that? All right. So um, it's, been, it's been terrible, honestly. I mean, just having to stay at home, you know, for a better part of the day and uh, not really doing anything, you know. I mean, there's total change in your, in your routine, you know, so it's difficult. But anyways, um, we've, we've come out of it. We've come to terms with the fact that you know, we have to make some adjustments, you know, these adjustments are critical, you know, to the extent that it's, it's just going to keep us um, in good health, make us spend more time with our families, you know, and all of that. So have you, had any kind of, have you had any kind of unrest around your area? Say that again. Have you had any kind of unrest? Has a place as your um, where you stay? Okay. How's the security around no, you? No, 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 no unrest. Peaceful. No unrest at all. You know, we. Um, I mean, so far the environment, the community has been very calm. You know, people are as much as possible staying at home. You know, I think we all understand. You know, the importance of staying at home, even though, you know, it it comes to us with some um, difficulties as well. You know, a lot of people, would, um, a lot of people that are staying at home. You know. It's difficult when you have, when you've lost your, your means of income, you know. But, That's um, amazing. For me, for me, um, I still work from the house. There's a lot to do. The business must go on, you know. Even though we're, we're operating in a subtle, um, you know, more scale, but, you know, we still try to to do some things. All house. right. So thank you thank so you much. So, much so I hear you have three sh children: Trinity, Omoya, and Ose. So just say hello to them for me. Are they coming or we do have to run now? <laughs> yeah, they're here. Come say hello. Just say hello. Say hi, Trinity. Hi, Trinity. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much. And no more, yeah. Bye. 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 All right. So um, yeah, as we said earlier, we're discussing managing pre-existing health conditions mm -hmm. now. Men, the elderly, and people with pre-existing health conditions are most likely to die due to the coronavirus. Now, this is the official data from Office of National Statistics in the UK. Now, according to the report carried out before April 6th, it found that more than 9 in 10 people who died due to COVID-19 had a pre-existing health condition, and many of those who died had multiple pre-existing illnesses. Now, back home here in Nigeria, we are we're also hearing of cases of recorded death linked to pre-existing illnesses such as asthma, diabetes, and heart conditions. Now, Dr. Tosin Majakodumi is the medical director and chief of cardiology, Eurocare Nigeria, a dual Nigerian-British national. He is an interventional cardiologist with specialization in both adult and pediatric health disease now heart disease sorry determined to contribute to the improvement of healthcare in nigeria he served as the tri-state cardiovascular associate chief of structural health disease from 2013 and then joined Eurocare in 2016. thank you so much for joining us thank you very much <laughs> dr Tosin. thank you thank you i'm so um first of all i'm happy that you decided to honor our invitation because it's hard to get people to talk these days but you know like us you are in the front line of this war That's so right. thank you so much for um for honoring our invitation now i was doing a research just like we had read earlier and statistics shows that a lot of death that um, that is linked to COVID-19 had you know those people had one or two illnesses that they've you know they've been managing for a while and when they got infected it now possibly ag aggravated you know and now led to the eventual demise. demise so what are we telling people and first of all have you had cases like that that you've had to deal with here in Nigeria well, again, thanks for the invitation. Um, all the statistics that you've given out are 100% correct. So what we know uh, from what we are learning from this very new virus, remember, we didn't have any cases up until about November of last year. So this is a brand new condition we've had over the last four or five months, um, and we're still learning about how this condition affects people. Um, what we know so far are all the statistics you described and the fact that it is mostly people who are older, above the age of 65, 
and those who have other heart, or other health conditions. Those yes. health conditions primarily being hypertension, which is very common here in Nigeria, um, obesity, lung disease, cardiovascular disease, yeah. and diabetes. Yeah. Hmm. Um, this is not unusual. We know from other viral illnesses that we see seasonally, the seasonal flu, we don't really get seasonal flu in Nigeria, but in the UK and other temperate climates where they do this, when the seasonal flu, when the season is around, these people, these older people with pre-existing conditions are the more likely to get complications of having the usual flu. They're more likely to be admitted to hospital, they're more likely to need critical care in, um, in hospital, and they're also unfortunately more likely to have a demise. Um, what we can learn from this, I think, is very simple, which is to reiterate all the healthy facts that we keep on telling the population on a daily basis, which is try as much as possible to stay as healthy as you can, make sure you keep your weight under good control. If you have any of these pre-existing conditions or are unfortunate enough to have them, then try and make sure they are managed perfectly. Your blood pressure needs to be perfect, your diabetes needs to be perfect, if you have lung disease, the best thing is to try and avoid having lung disease in the first place by not smoking, etc., etc. Okay, so I'll, I'll quickly um, come back to EC, but I wanted to just quickly reel out um, some of the findings that we found out for the um, statistics that was given. They said, first of all, currently men are the ones dying the most. Correct. With 55, age 55 to 59, and um, for women it's about age 50, 65 to 69. Then also the age of 65 and above. So there are nine, nine categories of people that are currently like in that high death rate, ages 65 and above. The people that have immunocompromised um, systems, so they are immunocompromised people, people with chronic um, lung disease, heart disease, diabetes, liver disease, chronic kidney disease, obesity, and neurological disorder. That's according to the statistics. So we have um, Dr. Yemisi with us. She's joined us via Skype, and um, she would be talking to us on diabetes. Then I'll come back to you on, um, on uh, what's it called? <laughs> on the heart. heart <laughs> yes. So Dr. Yemisi is a diplomat. Ameri um, she is a diplomat American Board of Internal Medicine, a fellow of both the American College of Physicians and American Associate of Clinical endocrinologist with her area of spe uh, specialty in internal medicine and endocrinology. Now remember you can join the conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways to Africa, one with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. Now Dr. Yemisi, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Yemisi. Yes, it's a pleasure being on the show today. Thanks right, for so inviting me. I don't know how much you have heard from the conversations we're having, but we, we wanted to quickly have you, then we'll continue with Dr. Majeko, Dr. Tosin that is here with us. Um, so yes. according to the reports that we are getting currently, right, we're seeing yes. that um, mm -hmm. a lot of people, I mean, lives are being claimed as a result of the diabetes disease. Is that correct? Yes. And why is that? Well, it's unfortunate, but diabetes is already prevalent in most countries in the world and, and it is more prevalent in older populations and it has been identified as one of the pre-existing conditions that increases risk of mortality and even contracting COVID-19 to start with. So uh, like Dr. Tosin was mentioning earlier on, if you are already diabetic, you have to consider yourself high risk. Most diabetics also have obesity, hypertension, and some of the other pre-existing conditions. So these individuals have more than one high-risk uh, category, so to speak. So it's very important to manage yourself well during this pandemic. Already, access to care is already reduced for all of us. Most hospitals and healthcare institutions are not um, open for day-to-day -day business. You know, uh, a lot of people already had poor access to care, especially with low socioeconomic status. Now there's lockdown everywhere. It's even harder to even access your hospital or your doctor. So the more reason why this is the time to avoid all the sh high sugar, high carbohydrate, high mm -hmm. starch in your diet. This is the time to take your medicines appropriately. You can stay in touch with your doctor or whoever is managing you by phone, WhatsApp, or any platform, 
that you have, if you have a blood sugar monitoring device at home, this is the time to use it if you were not monitoring before, because you really want to try and control your diabetes as much as possible. Okay. And same goes for the blood pressure, like Dr. Tosi was saying. Oh, okay, as an endocrinologist, okay, yes. are there measures in place to actually um, deal with or protect individuals with um, diabetes, obesity, and hypertension? The, the measures are essentially similar to the measures for the general public, you know, social distancing, hand washing, uh, best practice hygiene, um, you know, staying indoors, following your government recommendations. Uh, but in terms of your, in terms of chronic medical conditions, you just want to make sure you're following those social recommendations to a T because not everybody that gets exposed to COVID-19 will get the infection. Not everybody that gets infection will have symptoms. Not everybody that has symptoms will be very sick, and not everybody that is very sick will die. But the risk of all those different steps worsens or increases if you have a pre-existing health condition, like diabetes. So as a diabetic, it's more important that you really, really take care of yourself. And this is not just for diabetics. This is also for the general public. We're all aware of asymptomatic positive patients who are spreading the disease without knowing it. So it's important that we all follow this recommendation because you may have a diabetic parent at home and you are young, you don't have diabetes, so you think you're fine. So, you know, it, it's it's just very important because the that diabetic is at a higher risk of having a more severe disease that might need more uh, medical attention. Okay, or so even lead to increased risk of death. <clears throat> Dr. Yemisi, so I read a very shocking and very disturbing report that, um, that, is, um, carried, that was carried out by the International Diabetes Federation saying that by 2045, 700 million people will be living with diabetes. That, and now that as of today, one in five people above 65 have diabetes. Hmm. So it means that this is a big deal, you know, and we must take things seriously. So what do we do to reduce those numbers? And, you know, we're all praying that COVID-19 has come and it will go. But diabetes is going to remain. Same with hypertension and heart disease. This is an opportunity to talk about these chronic medical conditions. One of the main risk factors for diabetes is family history and obesity. So your family history, you can't do anything about. You're already who you are. You belong to your family. You've inherited the genes that you've already inherited. But you can do something about your environment. You can do something about what you eat, how active you will be. You can do something about maintaining a healthy weight or keeping a healthy lifestyle and avoiding you know, foods that are detrimental to your health. You can do something about doing regular checkups with your hospital or your doctor once a year to screen for diabetes and some of these other chronic medical conditions. Because if you have them, and you're diagnosed on time and put on treatment, your lifespan will be as long as anybody without diabetes. That's the truth. If you're able to control your blood pressure, your blood sugar. So the key really is trying to prevent and trying to control if you already have diabetes. But apart from those numbers you gave for diabetics, a huge number has pre-diabetes wow. that we don't even talk about. Almost for every non-diabetic, there's like five people with pre-diabetes. Mm -hmm. wow. These are individuals that are already at risk to becoming diabetic, you know, uh, very quickly. So it's important that we all get checked up. We all keep an eye on, you know, our weight, okay. our diet, our lifestyle, and then just that yearly checkup, which is really quite simple. It's and it's, it's achievable in most cases. Okay, okay Dr. Tosin. Um, Dr. Yemisi. Dr. Dr. <laughs> Yemisi, pardon me. <laughs> Dr. Yemisi, during this pandemic, yes. okay, what has been most challenging to you caring for people with diabetes? Well, you know, in the institution where I work currently, just like in most other places, we're having to manage a lot of our patients using telehealth telephones and videos. So it is challenging, you know, we are trying to make the best of it as best of we, as we can. Uh, we encourage our patients to check their blood sugars more frequently, even check their blood pressure more frequently at home using their own devices. 
when we talk to them on the phone, they can relay those numbers to us. We can adjust their medications. We can mail medications to them or send prescriptions to their pharmacies where they will pick it up. You know, so we're trying to, and I will encourage everybody to do that. Um, if you have a doctor that is managing your own diabetes, this is the time to stay in touch with that doctor by any platform that you can while maintaining your social distancing. So you can keep those blood sugars under control and blood pressure. They are like twins. Okay. <laughs> it's so like, you know, one one Dr. Dr. Dozi here with a <laughs> final question, Dr. MEC, final <laughs> question. This is a lockdown. People, so for instance, in Nigeria, we've been 14 days in, now they've extended another 14 days. Mm -hmm. This yes. time, a lot of people, Isis Chicks is looking very robust. <laughs> a lot of people are eating, you know, we're eating and we're eating. Exactly. I mean, it's almost like everybody that I know is complaining that, is it only them or they're overeating? So people they're are truly eating. overeating. So what would be the practical step to maintain, you know, a healthy eating um, uh, pattern at the same time, try to control the sugar level? Well, what I've been telling my page, and I agree with you, everybody's overeating worldwide, except for, you know, the unfortunate um, group that cannot afford to overeat. And it's a problem in either direction. But what I try to encourage my patient is, in terms of your food intake, try to maintain what you were doing before. Um, don't go pick up that extra snack just because it's there and you're at home and you're not at work. You want to try to keep your routine the same, wake up at the same time, uh, clean up, dress up, even though you're not going anywhere, find something to do, plan ahead, decide what you're having for breakfast, lunch, and supper tomorrow, and if you're going to have a snack, plan it ahead. So that way you are not just picking things unplanned and you're not eating more than planned. And then the exercise part is really crucial. Uh, we can all work, you know, we can all find some indoor exercises to do if we cannot, because we can't go to the gym anymore. But we can all do things. Exercise can be cheap. We don't have to buy any expensive equipment. So we can just try to, and there's so many sources online that we can, you know, find different simple exercises to do. But the key here is trying to maintain a routine day in, day out, depending on how long your stocking does. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Yemisi. We'll have to let you go now. Thank you. You're and welcome. please stay safe for us. <laughs> stay safe. Everyone. All right. All right. Bye. So we'll take a, sh a, a short break. Now, we still have Dr. Tosin here with us. And he will now tell us how to manage heart conditions, people with high blood pressure. We have a lot of them in Nigeria. So stay with us. We'll be right back.